introduction, brief and short. Dr. Barnes really needs no introduction. The president of the International Chiropractors Association, the notorious Dr. Barnes. Good morning, Palmer Chiropractor. It's really my pleasure to be here on campus. This is the birthplace of ICA. BJ formed ICA in 1923 as a chiropractic health girl. The name was changed to ICA in 1942. It is my distinct privilege to be president of ICA. It's a rather awesome task as I see it, especially at a time when there are those who want to destroy. I've been asked to answer just a few questions, and frankly, I don't know how long I have to answer some of such questions in respect to what I have said and what the media has printed. Because I feel that those that know me need no answer. And those that do not know me won't believe me anyhow. I did not censor Dr. Pettigall. I edited his letter, which is my privilege as chief of publishing in ICA. Dr. Pettigall said the majority of ICA voted against merger. An untrue statement. The majority that voted voted for merger, but not the majority of ICA. A vast difference. He said by false propaganda, innuendo, and false statements <laughs> that my campaign came to its fruition. Wouldn't you, as president, have edited that? No, I did not censure. Dr. Pettigo, I looked at his article as I would anybody else's and simply edited it. <laughs> there have been other questions in respect to my changing my mind. My God, if I hadn't have changed my mind a few times in life, or if you hadn't have, you'd be the same as you were when you were 18. In 1986, when I said, let's go, let's go for merger, let's take a good look at it, let's do it now, let's look at it, I sincerely believed that. And that was before Harry Roosevelt said, in his 10-point plan for chiropractic, to change the name of the profession, such as chiropractic did to podiatry to their advantage, we should change our name in chiropractic, remove our traditional relationship with subluxation. Has chiropractic matured enough to remove its traditional relationship with subluxation? He also said, join the real world by eliminating our opposition to inoculation and vaccination. In 1986, they weren't giving drugs in Florida. In 1986, the law in Illinois had not been changed to allow national college to teach pharmaceuticals. A lot of things were different in 1986. And as I saw the metafactors coming out of the woodwork, those that would bastardize this science and turn it into a therapeutic regime, a haberdashery of common domain sciences, before I saw them step forth, I thought there was a brotherhood out there, a brotherhood strong enough to sustain chiropractic in the merger, and now I see that is simply not true. And therefore I stepped up, stepped forth, to champion the cause of this organization to maintain chiropractic as a separate and distinct science in the healing arts. Probably the fountainhead of liberal chiropractic is National College. That will really remind you 
Now this dichotomy of ours did not insidiously creep upon us like some malignancy. The dichotomy in chiropractic began from its very inception. In fact, early on, there were more mixers than straights. Immediately upon founding his school and infirmary on chiropractic, B.E. E. Palmer took in students, many of which were practitioners of the other healing arts. Medical doctors, eclectic medical doctors, allopathic medical doctors, homeopathic medical doctors, osteopaths, naturopaths, <coughs> and the like. All took D.E. Palmer's work. And what would you do if you were an allopath or an eclectic at the time, and you took another course in healing? What would you do with it? You would bring it into your armamentarium treatment, wouldn't you? You would mix it into your practice. The early term was mixed practice. And that uh, disintegrated until the unflattering term mixer was brought forth. In 1906, Salon Langworthy here in Cedar Rapids wrote the first textbook on chiropractic. It was called Modernized Chiropractic. Yes, it was the first textbook on chiropractic. It was out about four months before B.J. Palmer and D.D. Palmer published theirs, which was also in 1906. You go into your archives, look in the book. His school was predicated on mixed practice. <laughs> Immediately, schools sprang from across the nation on mixed practice. In fact, D.D. Palmer, leaving Davenport, Iowa, joined one out west, the Palmer Gregory College. Gregory was an MD. The National College, for many, many, many years, gave out naturopathic diplomas along with chiropractic diplomas. The dichotomy has always been with us. But now, now, we are at the crossroads. Will we take that path into therapeutic chiropractic? Or will we retain our identity as a non-therapeutic science in the health and care of human beings? Now, I want to explain that a little bit as I go along here in respect to the term therapeutic. But back to National College and their president, Dr. Winterstein. Some statements from Dr. Winterstein. Oh yes, NCC graduates are well qualified to function at the general practitioner level in the diagnostic arena. My concern is that they also be able to function as a general practitioner in the therapeutic arena. Point four in his letter, as I see it. We must insist upon the right to treat people, not just the anatomical parts of people. Point six. We must support National Chiropractic College so that this broad spectrum, highly qualified chiropractic physician of which I have spoken continues to be supplied for the health of the public. <laughs> what did Dr. Winterstein say when SCASA was accredited? This came out in October 1988 from Outreach, the publication of National College. What a revolting development this is. If one reads the accreditation standards, one can readily recognize the difference. The schools that are recognized by SCASA teach that it is the purview of the chiropractor to locate and correct subluxations. Well, isn't it? It is the purview of the chiropractor to locate and correct subluxations. To me, this concept harks back to the early days of B.J. Palmer. <laughs> then he goes on to state, Indeed, this is a regressive state of affairs. On the other hand, maybe opportunity knocks. Perhaps the time has come for the majority of rational thinking chiropractic physicians all over the world to clearly separate ourselves from those individuals who wish to be responsible for locating and correcting spinal subluxations. Think, doctors. What do you uniquely provide?
D.D. Palmer said, chiropractors do not manipulate, they do not use the process of manipulating, they adjust. How many manipulators were there, doctors, when D.D. Palmer first adjusted Harvey Lillard? Thousands! In 1874, A.T. still founded osteopathy on the manipulatory approach to blood vascular involvement and disease. They were manipulated all over the world at that time. The Swedish masseurs, the napropaths, the bone setters, and the osteopaths. When Harvey Lillard received an adjustment, Dini Palmer went on to say, a chiropractor is not a therapeutist. He is not interested in discovering nor applying remedies. To be versed in therapeutics would be to be skilled in the use of the application of remedies. Chiropractors do not use remedies. From our very inception, Doctor, we had a non-therapeutic stance. Now, what do I mean by that? We did not apply a therapy for the person's diseased condition. That's what I mean by that. We did not apply a remedy or a therapy for the person's diseased condition. We found the subluxation and adjusted it. Who applied the therapy? Innate. Because only the body heals. There is only one cause to disease doctors. One cause, period. I want you to think on this. It is the body's inability to comprehend itself and or its environment. I burned you with an iron from the stove. You couldn't comprehend the heat, could you? Hmm? You are unable to comprehend that insult. If a massive germ attack comes upon a population, some live, don't they? Some die, don't they? Those that die could not comprehend the insult. The agent of disease. Germs are agents of disease, not causes. They are opportunistic scavengers. There is only one cause of disease. It comes from within out. The body's inability to comprehend itself and or its environment. There is only one cure to a disease. Period. And that's the body's ability to heal itself. If you have an infected wound on your hand and med a medical doctor comes along and puts an antibiotic on that wound, does that antibiotic heal that wound? No. It removes an obstacle to healing. But the body heals the wound, right? And when a surgeon's knife invades your body cavity and removes a tumorous mass, does that heal the body? Oh, no. Back the body even has to heal the wound the surgeon made. Body heals, but the surgeon has removed an obstacle, an obstruction to healing. When you adjust a subluxation in the spine, does that heal the body? No. There is only one thing any doctor can do of any discipline, and that is to remove an obstruction to healing. And what's ours? The subluxation. Our legislative niche has not been supplied to us as a part of or a replacement for medicine, but a science based upon a new premise, a new theory in the correction of disease syndromes within the human body by allowing that innate expression from above down to, from within out to work, to allow that doctor who resides in each and every one of us full expression. And today, with the armamentary and the medical evidence behind us on subluxation, what have we to worry about? We have our legislative net. We are a professional with a narrow scope of practice. A broad body implications. And this is where we should remain. If we wander into the therapeutic domain, Cheeking, baking, irrigating them, and hanging them from their heels, what will you uniquely provide? 
You can go down to your local hot spot and lay on a cock's table. That's right. Put a buck in an anatom order in, in Las Vegas. You can get a diet from your dietitian, a list of exercises from your karate teacher. You can get a manipulation from your physical therapist, but who's going to clear your atlas, huh? Who's going to set that disc block subluxation with a nice, precise thrust? Huh? Who's going to take care of the health of the nation if you're going to go out there in orthopedic domain, as the ACA directive seems to be, musculoskeletal domain? There won't be enough aches, pains, cranks, and strains to go around, doctors. You will be in the most competitive of all health fields today. It is already. Already there are 60,000 physical therapists, 30,000 physiatrists, 30,000 occupational therapists, and 50% of you are doing it. Join the ranks of the therapeutic practitioners. When I interned with Dr. Clarence Gunston, he was seeing 250 to 300 patients a day. I visited Herford here about six, seven years ago from Michigan. I have adjusting rooms, no modalities, just nice, clean, neat, adjusting tables, a sign on the wall, don't speak to the doctor. You think speaking to a patient helps you adjust? You think speaking to a patient allows you to feel better? Or well, if I need to remove fear, but you can adjust a smiling dog who wants to get out of and you will develop the opposite. Of course, Dr. Hurston and both Dr. Guns gave way lectures once a week. The auditorium was full. He told everybody, they told everybody the truth of chiropractic. Dr. Guns was most certainly the most famous of all chiropractors. Basically speaking, today I'm sure he'd be recognized in the top five, wouldn't he? And he'd shake them, bake them, irrigate them, or hang them by their heels. Weren't there any discs in his time? Weren't there prolapse discs, sequestered discs, subligamentous prolapse discs? Mm. The disc theory is either an absolute and complete myth or corrective chiropractic adjustment takes care of discs. My dad with one hand, because he was paralyzed on the other side of his body, saw a hundred patients a day. You can do the same if you have a vision. Because what the mind can envision, it can achieve. I'm a firm believer in that. But you won't do it with an armamentarium of therapies. You won't do it adjusting. I'm a full spine adjuster. A patient never is on the table more than three minutes. My God, they couldn't stand it. Not when I'm adjust, although some call it the through the floor technique. <laughs> Getting inside, doctors, you don't know what you have in your hands. Merger being held up as a panacea to solve all of our problems. Our problems come from within out. Until we individualistically can return that pride in our own belief system, nothing will help us at all. You doubt, you people. I saw that beautiful little baby in the room here. Early on in the ICA room. How many of those little infants are being injected with the disease juice of monkey kidneys? Hmm? How many take pertussis? And when you have your own little child in your hand, have you the doubts? When the medical doctor says to you, now it's time to inject this child. Are you cringing it here? Do you doubt your own belief system? Doctors lack it. Strength of belief in their own system will have meager practice. I'll clue you. Step on that rusty nail in the horse pasture. Are you going to be running with a tetanus shot? I want you to examine your hearts and minds. I see Pat Keith in the back of the room here. I've known him so many years. He knows when I graduated. 1954. I had to be told chiropractic didn't work. My God, I thought I could raise the dead. <laughs> now, maybe there's a bit wrong with that approach, but the opposite's worse. 
Uh -huh. Somewhere in between this generation has got to take a grasp on what it has. Now, most certainly, you don't have a panacea for every disease known to man, but you work with that that only heals. You alone can release the subluxation. <coughs> the manipulator isn't even trying to do that. He's trying to mobilize the spine. Spinal manipulative therapy. You know why that's so easy for them to say? Because the broad-based full-spectrum chiropractor, if you want to call it that, the mixer, puts chiropractic up here in the flow chart. The Palmer, traditional Palmer steeped chiropractor, puts chiropractic up here on the flow chart. They look the same, the name is the same. Underneath chiropractor on the traditional chiropractic viewpoint is adjustment. Now below the adjustment, there may be traction, nemo methods, hot packs, cold packs, maybe even some ultrasound, but they all relate to the adjustment. They are pre- and post chiropractic cap. The broad-based chiropractor, the mixer, has chiropractic up here. Adjustment is not immediately under chiropractic. He may have the same list of modalities that the straight concept chiropractor has. But in his list of modalities is SMT. Spinal manipulative therapy. Because he holds that out as just being one, one of his treatments in his therapeutic approach to health. And that's why staying well, the newsletter of FCER, can come out with statements such as this. Now here we have June 1988 and December 1988. In June 1988, they said, how to avoid those back aches? Subluxation isn't mentioned in here at all. Four pages. We ourselves are chiefly responsible for our back problems. Most of us don't get the proper physical conditioning for our spine. Too often we exercise erratically and without proper warm-up. We'd rather ride than walk. We gain too much weight and sometimes develop pot bellies and sway backs and put added strain in the back. We sprawl on soft chairs and sofas. We subject our back to unnecessary pressures, twists and jolts by bending and lifting things improperly. Thus we injure weakened back muscles. A Columbia University in New York study of 5,000 back patients found 80% of back aches involved injured muscles and ligaments. Severe stress can cause the actual tearing of muscles or ligaments, causing instant acute pain. Exercises for the abdomen and back. The best defense against back ache is a good set of back and stomach muscles. The best defense against back ache is a spine that's in line. Your local health spa can tell you that. And then ask your doctor. Now this is F-C-E-R, the arm of ACA. Patient newsletter on the back page. Can anything be done about it? Ask your doctor. Yes, 19 times 20 research shows that a patient is best served by such conservative treatment as chiropractic rather than drastic steps such as surgery. Chiropractic treatment might include adjustment. <laughs> now it gets worse. Chiropractic treatment might include adjustment to alter the position of the injured disc from the nerve roots, thus relieving muscle spasm and pain. The vertebra is not even mentioned. I thought this might be a fluke. I brought it up at the our meeting, which is often called the miracle in Monterey. <laughs> And Dr. Luke, he grabbed it right away, my good friend, Dr. Ken Luke, president of ACA, and said, my God, we've got to change it. I said, you bet you do. He said, I'll see to it, Fred. So I thought it might be just a fluke. And then comes out, staying well. October, December, poverty, November, December, 1988. This one here is on aging, how you can slow it down. What causes back problems in older people, blah, blah, blah. Chiropractic treatment, which may involve adjustments, exercise, and other therapy, is, equally, is uniquely effective in restoring spinal integrity in older and younger adults. Chiropractic treatment 
which may involve adjustments, treatment. Chiropractic isn't treatment. Treatment is therapeutic. Can you see the difference? Now, it's hard to understand that, I imagine, for some of you young people who have not heard the old war horses in this profession, as I'm often called, or the old dinosaur. But if I'm the old dinosaur, at least you can say you saw it. <laughs> Any profession of work has a unique, singular vernacular. Any name me one. Just find me one profession of work that does not have its unique, singular vernacular. Why are we opting for theirs? Why are we becoming medical parents? Because ACA wants us to. It's clear. Since the general or prevailing opinion on any subject is rarely or never the whole truth, it is only by collision and adverse opinions that the remainder of the truth has any chance of being supplied. This collision of ideas has brought the truths out. Now, B.J., our master, as I often say, was one who could put it a paragraph like that into two words. Conflicts clarify. And the conflicts in this ICA merger battle have clearly clarified individualistic stances. When I was at the New York College, Dr. Sportelli, who will be speaking to you today and possibly is in this room, mentioned this. Moving on to discuss ACA's participation in the Reader's Digest outreach insert, Dr. Sportelli claimed that it was successful in communicating the full spectrum of mainstream chiropractic in a manner comprehensible to a wide audience of the uninitiated. He maintained that it was possible, if not more efficacious, to fulfill this purpose without the use of the term subluxation. Subluxation was not mentioned in the entire first Reader's Digest insert. Dr. Pammer, Dr. Sportelli, and Dr. McLeland, going on in this ACA IC day performance, stated, characterized the battle over the term subluxation and adjustment as one of semantics only, arguing that the language has to be changed to conform with terminology prevailing among the other health professions. <clears throat> Doctors then want our vernacular gone, completely Remove. They want us to use the vernacular of another profession. A conquering emperor taking over another nation commonly destroys the language first. You want to destroy a people? Remove their language. This is what Scott Hoffman has to say in respect to that. In the last ICA journal. Chiropractors must maintain their identity. The concern that chiropractic could be swallowed up by the larger, more powerful medical community is real. The world does not need another medical physician who happens to manipulate or another health care provider who prescribes drugs. Chiropractic has a unique history of providing an alternative, more naturalistic approach to patients. It has a philosophy of enhancing the innate ability of the body to fight disease and maintain health. The primary practice of chiropractic is the laying on of hands and the specific adjustment. These factors must remain the basis of chiropractic if it is to survive. Chiropractic philosophy and terminology cannot be allowed to die. We must develop a consensus of chiropractic opinion, and this would include a consensus on terminology. We cannot allow it to die. Chiropractors do not manipulate, they adjust. And a chiropractic adjustment is not therapy. Now, possibly I've harangued this a bit too long. But one final comment. What is this class break, Ben? 
on draft 10. Draft 10 is a far worse document than draft 9. Draft 10, by my direction, was to go to committee for study, revision, and amendment. Instead, without some board members even reading it, the merger advocates on the board forced it out again. And they wanted it to come out again without the deletions. <coughs> but I insisted that the document coming out to you people would have everything crossed out that ACA crossed out, and ACA crossed out ICA's terminology. Basically, you are voting on ACA's constitution. Remember, the board of draft 10 is set, is set up this way. Seven ACA members and three ICA members. Now you tell me how that can be equal participation. Plus, by Dr. Harris's own admission, the executive vice president of ACA, in his letter of July 14th, he stated, the first key issue appears in the preamble of the organization's constitution. The preamble represents the goals and objectives of the new organization. Now, please allow me to repeat. The preamble presents the goals and objectives of the new organization. This is an area thought to represent a crucial area of genuine consensus. And in fact, Dr. Harris states, only minor changes were made. You know what that minor change was? Remove drugs. That's a minor change. ICA insisted that drug test was put in there. And here's what it said in the preamble. By 1995, with scientific methods and evidence to secure the position of the chiropractic profession as preeminent in drugless, non-surgical, spinal, and neuromuscular skeletal care, ACA crossed out drugless. And here is their reason. ACA was forced to reject this change since it could tie the hands of those chiropractors practicing in states which permit limited prescription of proprietary drugs. Well, doctors, I think their hands should be tied. Harris went on to say, and more importantly, in those states which define a drug to include nutritional supplements and vitamins. I don't know how many there are, I think possibly three, but their laws should be changed. And any conscientious chiropractor would take his best medicine, I should say, the vitamin cabinet, and dump it right down the great white microphone to keep chiropractic from being drugless. I want you to remember that when they wave the hand of the panacea before you, that merger will solve all of our ills. Everything comes from above down, from within out. Our ills will be solved from within out when each individualistic chiropractor across this nation practices what chiropractic is, then we can have unity. Unity must exist with conformity, not lack of conformity. When two people do not agree, both are necessary. When they both agree, one is unnecessary. There is no agreement now what chiropractic truly is. And you cannot merge on that kind of a basis unless absolutely there is equal representation. Read draft 10. Three members of the board will be ICA members and seven ACA. You drop a drop of perfume in a cup of water, doctors, and it is no longer perfume. I don't care how strong those three are against seven. Now on my final moments here, I'd like to quote something here from Soviet Life magazine. The November issue, 1988. Do we have to be told this from Russia? Listen. On TV, the man who's writing this article says, I saw American chiropractors demonstrating their manipulations of a patient on a table. The device was very simple, but we probably have nothing like it. You're wrong about that. I was told at the State Committee for Inventions and Discoveries in the city of Sumi, Dr. Anatoly Gretzinko has invented a table for manual therapy that is even better than the American one. At a second clinical infectious disease hospital, now I've skipped a paragraph here, in Moscow, Gretzinko was given a group of jaundice patients, all of them suffering from viral hepatitis type B. Here are the official conclusions of the result of his treatment signed by Professor Zidlov. 
zygmola. Manual therapy helps to reduce jaundice more rapidly. It improves the supply of blood to the liver, restores the functional condition of the gastrointestinal tract, accelerates recovery, and shortens the patient's stay in the hospital from 12 to 17 days. Let's think of, again, now, quoting from the article, the question naturally arises whether it is possible to treat such different diseases by using one and the same method. By using one and the same method, chiropractic has always went out and worked with all disease. Happened. Hmm? Now they're asking this question in Russia. Red Singel says, I consider it a universal remedy. It was Hippocrates who first said that the origin of all diseases should be sought in the spine. The spine is not just a skeletal support for the whole body, it is also a tube in which the spinal cord is concealed. Segments of the spinal cord are connected with the internal organs and systems of the entire human body. When a vertebra are displaced, this connection is broken, or as we say, innervation is disturbed. Organs corresponding to this particular segment become vulnerable and cause pain. When displacement is corrected, the previous connection is restored. Hippocrates said that one can achieve recovery from an illness in a natural way by making the displaced vertebra correspond. However, this has been as as <coughs> mostly forgotten. The commentator says, I admit that Brett Single, like any other enthusiast, overestimates the importance of his favorite methods. However, against the background of the dismal words, etiology unknown. Remember those dismal words? Look through any disease manual medically. Etiology unknown. Okay, however, against the background of the dismal words, etiology unknown, which accompany the description of many ailments in the medical manual. Brett Singel's motto, scoliosis, is the father of all diseases. This inter introduces a classical clarity on the matter. And we have introduced a classical clarity on the matter when we have shown that chiropractic works in all diseases. If you have a subluxation, chiropractic can be of help. If you go forth with that attitude, young doctors, there will be no limit to your practice whatsoever. But first, doctors, you must believe it yourselves. What is your belief system, doctors? Hmm? What is it? Confused as many of you are because of the curriculums that we have in our chiropractic colleges, jam and cram with Materia Medica, you are not giving that full message. I, I can't say it's the college's fault. We have a lot to do. We were actually taught by chiropractic wars when I was here. Today, that's an impossibility. When I was here, many of us were chiropractic patients, sons and daughters of chiropractors. That is not true today. So we have to look well to our teaching process, trying to ameliorate our philosophy, and again, bringing these truths forth to the students so that they can come out of here firmly convinced of their place in the healing arts. And that isn't just applying another hot pack or doing a better job of a colonic irrigator, <laughs> but adjusting the spine. The germ theory of disease is going down the tube. Germs are not the cause of disease. They never have been. We are in a perfect position to grasp the philosophies that are coming out today. For instance, the Institute of Noetic Sciences in California, Mind Sciences, speaking of the power of the mind and positive suggestion in health and disease, showing that even a placebo heals. I'll tell you this, doctors. What does a placebo put into the body? Nothing. Now, it's the most proven of all nostrums. It has stood the test of time medically. It's the only one that has, the placebo. What does it put into the body? Nothing. Oh, what does it remove from the body? Fear. Then what heals the body, doctors? Come on, Addy, people. Okay. What heals the body? It is. Now you've got a club right here, this Adio club. Doing a great job of bringing that out again. What does Adio mean? About down. Inside out. That is where all healing force comes from. Fire none. Now, don't believe me, because I'm a chiropractor. I've got to constantly quote the next, don't I? So the veracity of my statement is believed. Health and healing, Andrew Wheel. Well, a medical author, listen. You can take this paragraph and put it right into BJ's book, and you would not know BJ had not written it. 
the body has innate healing abilities. Healing comes from inside, not outside. It is simply the body's natural attempt to restore equilibrium when equilibrium is lost. Healing cannot be prevented from occurring, though it can be obstructed in its expression. Nor can it be obtained from anyone or anything external. You are born with the power to heal, because healing is an innate capacity of every person, as it is of every animal and plant, and I suspect of every created thing. Listen to sick people, and you will hear much talk of seeking cures, healers, and healing. Medicines and medicine men can sometimes catalyze a healing response or remove obstructions to it, but they never give you what you do not already have. The power to heal is your property and birthright, ready to go to work whenever changing conditions create a demand for it. Agents of disease are not causes of disease. Materialistic medicine, which has so obscured the philosophical origins of the concept of health, has also fostered dangerous delusions about cause and effect relationships between diseases and the agents that transmit them. Germs are agents of disease. Agents of disease do not cause us to get sick. They are merely potential vectors of illness waiting for chances to do their mischief. Given a chance, they will do it. Chances come along because of the natural fluctuations of our cycles of relative health and subluxations, I might add. At a time of impending breakdown of equilibrium, an agent of disease might find fertile ground in which to develop, or might act as the straw that broke the camel's back. Agents of disease are all around us, not only in the form of viruses, bacteria, and parasites, but as a multitude of potential irritants, such as carcinogenic chemicals, allergens, insects, toxic plants, and so forth. A person solidly equilibrated in the phase of relative health can often interact with these agents and not get sick. Since internal factors determine the nature of our relationship with them, the true causes of disease are internal. He goes on to state, forgive me if I repeat myself. This point must be stressed. External material objects are never causes of disease merely agents waiting to cause specific symptoms in susceptible hosts. This principle suggests other ways of thinking about prevention and treatment than those predominant in conventional medicine, rather than warring on disease agents with the hope, in vain I suspect, of eliminating them. We have to worry more about strengthening resistance to them and learning to live in balance with them more of the time. D.D. Palmer, 1910. The science of chiropractic has modified our views concerning life, death, health, and disease. We no longer believe that disease is an entity, something foreign to the body, which may enter from without and which we have to grasp, struggle, fight, and conquer, or submit and succumb to its ravages. Disease is a disturbed condition, not a thing of enmity. Disease is an abnormal performance of certain functions and abnormal activity has its causes. Now I can go to other books, and you can read them too. Healing from Within by Jaffe, The Anatomy of an Illness by Norman Cousins, Love, Medicine, and Miracles by Bernie Siegel. How many times do you have to be knocked on the door that we are on the right track? And we have an obstacle to healing that can be removed with the vertebral adjustment. Listen to the masters in our profession. I listen to some in medicine when Claude Bernard stated illnesses constantly, hover constantly above us, their seeds blown by the wind, but they do not set in the terrain unless the terrain is ready to receive them. Think on that for a moment. Andrew Will. It is a misnomer to call medicine the healing art. The healing art is the secret wisdom of the body. Medicine can do no more than facilitate it. Listen to our own virtual strength. The molecular changes that accompany disease are not the cause of disease, but the result. The molecular changes are simply manifesting the disease. 
Galen Price. I often say the philosophical liege of this profession since, of course, B.J. passed away. Health is a condition in which all body functions are carried on normally, meeting all body demands for adaptation to the environment. Dr. Carl Cleveland, Sr., former graduate, the founder of the Cleveland Colleges. The purpose of an adjustment is not to depress or stimulate, but to remove interference with transmission or pressures from the affected nerves, thus restoring normal nerve supply. Innate intelligence or nature, with her exact knowledge, decreases or increases activities in the various organs or parts as she finds necessary. With our limited conscious knowledge, we cannot educationally substitute such limited conscious knowledge and control on the outside for that innate intelligence, unlimited knowledge and control on the inside. unique disease, allow me a quote of my own, is not so much the virulence of outside organisms as it is the resistance of the internal inside mechanisms that produce a healthy body. Doctors, there is but one cause of disease, and that's the body's inability to comprehend itself and or its environment. Listen to our great master. I call him master because I consider all great teachers masters. That B.J. Palmer was a great teacher. I was there. I know. The master maker of the human body does not create you and then run off and leave you masters. He stayed on the job as in it, the fellow within, spirit from above down, inside out. Expressing, creating, exploring, directing you in every field and phase of existence so that your home is truly the world, and the world is your home. What is the principle of chiropractic doctors? It's not the subluxation. It's not that neural pyramidal encroachment can exist along the spine. That's not the principle. The principle is abdial. About done inside out, the force of life directing you in every phase of existence. Read Rollo May, PhD's book called The Courage to Create. The common denominator in all great men is cognizance of this force. Napoleon called it a sound that rings down throughout the ages. Einstein said, I have learned more from intuitive thought than all education. Tell me what's intuitive thought. Mm. <coughs> Dickinson said, little oh, brownies come up to him. Little oh, brownies. But the DJ said, it comes through in thought flashes. Our philosophy goes way beyond Way beyond just the healthcare. It is a life force philosophy recognizing a God in man principle and recognizing the body's ability to heal itself when it is unencumbered by subluxation. You can uniquely provide a service to the health of mankind, not in the haberdashery of common domain sciences that any nurse or anybody else can use but in your cognizance of that cause relationship between subluxation and the body's ability to heal. Therefore, chiropractic has absolutely no barriers. I don't care what name they put upon a disease syndrome. If a subluxation is there, you can be of help. And that's why B.J. said, get the idea and all else follows. And then later on in life, became the big idea. Get the big idea and all else follows. And then all the chiropractic colleges across the nation sprung forth, and from each and every one of them have came good and great philosophers who have gotten the big idea. But this college is the fountainhead. And it should not desert the principle. And above and beyond 
this fountainhead is the brotherhood we have. Richard Bob put it this way. The bond that makes your true family is not one of fun, but of respect and joy in each other's life. Where do members of one family grow up under the same roof? So across this world of chiropractic, from other colleges too, we have those who understand the big idea. And this movement in ICA, doctors, is to preserve the place of that big idea in the preservation of this healing art. And as far as I'm concerned, it deserves no debate. Second, 